ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Now let us look at slightly more complicated things. Namely, if you are given more than one equation in three variables, what could be possible solution of that? So let us uh, look at which again geometrically it's very uh, obvious. Equations in two variables can have three types of solution sets depending upon the order states in parallel. Then there are no points of intersection, and the system has no solution. And if the lines are identical, the two graphs coincide, intersecting at an infinite number of points. The system therefore has an infinite number of solutions. Likewise, systems of three linear equations and three variables can have a single unique solution, no solutions, or an infinite number of solutions, depending on the ways in which the three planes are oriented. Let's consider all the possible ways in which three planes can intersect or not intersect. We will number these planes one, two, and three. One possibility is that no two planes in the system are parallel, and all three planes intersect at only one point. In this case, the system will have one unique solution. A second possibility is that two of the planes are not parallel. And so their points of intersection form a line. If the third plane intersects the other two along this same line, then the common points of intersection for all three planes are represented by that line. The system will therefore have an infinite number of solutions corresponding to every point on the line. The third plane does not necessarily have to be distinct from both of the other planes. If the third plane is identical to one of the other two planes, then the points common to all three planes are still represented by the same line of intersection, and the system will have an infinite number of solutions. An infinite number of solutions will also exist if a system consists of three identical planes. In this case, any point which lies on one plane is common to all three planes. The system will therefore have an infinite number of solutions corresponding to every point on the plane. In addition, there are several orientations of the plane which will result in a system with no solutions. Any time a system has two distinct parallel planes, there can be no solution. Since distinct parallel planes have no points in common, Regardless of the orientation of the third plane, there can be no points which lie on all three planes. The third plane can be distinct and parallel to the other two, identical to one of the other two, or not parallel to either of the other planes, thus intersecting both planes. Regardless of the orientation of the third plane, since there are no points in common to all three planes, the system has no solutions. One additional configuration of the planes which will result in a system with no solutions is if the planes are oriented so that their intersection points lie along three distinct parallel lines. Once again, since there are no points in common to all three planes, the system has no solutions. Right. So uh, let us just uh, summarize what we have done till now. Uh, we have looked at system of uh, a linear equation in two variables, and then we looked at uh, uh, two equations in two variables, and then we looked at a system of uh, three equations in three variables and possible uh, solutions. In either of these dimensions, either the system has no solution or it has infinite number of solutions or a unique solution. How does one go about analyzing when the number of variables increase? 
there is no geometry available. Okay. What do we do about it? So, what we will do is try to convert these geometric pictures into algebra and then try to see whether we can extend that algebra for num more number of variables. So, let us uh, analyze this uh, method of variable elimination method. So, let us look at this example, simple examples and then we will try to formalize this. So, the example is x plus 3 y plus 5 z is equal to 0, x plus 2 y plus 3 z is equal to 1 and the third equation is x minus 3 equal to 1. So, I have labeled these equations as E 1, E 2 and E 3. So, the idea is try to eliminate already in the third equation, right, y is missing. So, let us try to eliminate the variable y from the other two equations also. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, what we do is we do these operations. Okay. So, uh, here for example, what we have done is uh, we have eliminated x from the equations. The first equation remains as it is. The second equation what we have done is E 3 minus E 1 and then operation is E E 2 minus E 1. So, we have just taken a linear combinations of the equations. So, the solutions will not change. The idea is whenever you take a linear combination of any two or more of the equations, the solution does not change, but it results in a system which may have lesser number of variables. So, what we have done is we have eliminated the variable x and we have gotten x plus 3 y, right. So, this system and now from these two equations I can try to eliminate again one of the variables. So, let us do that. So, E 3 minus 3 E 2. So, that operation is done. So, I get a system of equations which is equivalent to the earlier one because I have just taken linear combinations not done nothing else. right? So, solution of the last system should be same as solution of the original system. So, that is the idea, but in the last system I get a equation 0 equal to minus 2 that means that is not possible that is absurd right. So, that means this system has got no solution right. So, that is algebraically solving. So, this system has no solution. Let us look at uh, this 2 x 1 minus. So, this is a system you can read that okay, three equations and we try to do the same right. Try to eliminate the variables and I get this kind of a. So, 2 x 1 minus x 2 plus 3 x 3 I have not written down the operations that is simple because three variables in three equations one can do that. So, that leads to this kind of a new system which has got all three variables present in the first equation. Okay. In the second one only two are there and in the third one only one is there. So, this system is equivalent to the the given system. So, solution of this should be same as the solution of the original one and here I get x 3 equal to 2 last equation. I put the value of x 3 in the previous equation I get the value of x 2 and I put these two values in the first equation I get the value of x 1. So, I eliminate and then substitute. So, this method is called elimination and substitution method or backward substitution and that gives me the solution of the system. So, this system has got a unique solution right. Earlier one had no solution, this one has unique solution and let us look at uh, another one, this one. So, there is only one equation x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 6 that we know geometrically is a plane right. How many points are there in the plane? Infinite number of them. So, this system one equation in three variables will have infinite number of solutions possible. How we can write them? One possibility is you can write x 1 equal to 6 minus x 2 minus x 3 right. So, that means what x 1 can be determined in terms of the values of x 2 and x 3 and x 2 and x 3 are free to choose any values right. So, if I put different values for x 2 and different values for x 3, I get a different value for x 1. So, for x 2 and x 3 can take infinite number of values. 
So, that means x 1 also has infinite number of values that means the system has got infinite number of solutions which we are verifying algebraically. Geometrically it is a plane we know it is an infinite number of solutions. So, three possibilities I have given you three examples where the system had no solution, system had exactly one solution and the system had okay, infinite number of solutions. What is we observe in solving all these things? The solution of a system does not change whether it is two variables, two equations, one equation, any two equations are interchanged, what will happen? If I interchange any two equations, right? instead of saying this is line 1 and this is line 2 in the plane, I am saying this is line 1 and this is line 2, I am just renaming them. right? The solution does not change if I change the order of the equations. right? An equation is multiplied by a non-zero scalar. If I take a line right, and multiply it by a non-zero scalar everywhere on the left hand side as well as the right hand side, does the equation change? Equation remains the same, line remains the same, right? So, the solution does not change, right? So, multi why non-zero? Because if I multiply by 0, then I all the information is lost, 0 equal to 0, there is nothing, equation is gone, right? So, multiplication by a non-zero scalar leaves the equation, so solutions are unchanged. And the third one is, one is equation is added to another that we have already seen, right. If one uh, solution is there, right, and you add one equation to another scalar multiple of that, now of course not 0, right, then the solution does not change, right, that we saw. In the two variable thing, we saw that if you add scalar multiple of one linear equation to another, the point of intersection does not change, only the inclination of the line changes, right. So, these three are basic operations that do not change the solution of a system of equations, right. So, that is one observation and the other observation is that the variables really do not play any role in the all the computations. x 1 remains x 1, x 2 remains x 2, x 3 remains x 3. It is only the constants which are in front of them or on the right side of the equality. Right? They change when you do something with them, scalar multiple, add, do something. Right? So, we can forget when we write, we can forget about these variables. Only we should keep track that this is the coefficient of the first variable, this is the coefficient of the second variable, this is coefficient of the third and so on. Right? So, variable do not play any role. So, let us try to describe this in an abstract setting these are observations. So, we will define formally an equation of the form a x 1 plus a x 2 plus dot 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 a n x n equal to b 1 is called a linear equation in n variables x 1, x 2. Number of variables is n, only one equation. Why it is called linear? Because the powers of all the variables is 1 that is why it is called the linear equation in n variables. So, give more than one, so you can have a system of m equations in n variables. So, a system of m equations in n variables, we can write them as right to have a strategy or systematic way of writing for the first equation the coefficient a 1 1 right x 1 a 1 2. So, the first letter indicates the equation, second indicates the variable, right. And similarly for the last one m mth equation a m 1 coefficient of the first variable, a m 2 coefficient of the second variable on the right hand side b n. So, this is an abstract notation of writing m equations in n variables, right. And for computation purposes, we do not want x 1, x 2, x n coming into the picture, right. We do not want them. So, let us write. So, before that, let us just say a vector uh, x 1, s 2, s n in R n. Everybody is familiar with R 1, R 2, R 3, R n, n components, right. So, a vector 
we call it as or a point S1, S2, Sn in Rn is called a solution of the system. So when we will say it is a solution, if I replace X1 by S1, X2 by S2, Xn by Sn in all the equations, then the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, right. So that is called a solution. So the idea is how do we solve such a system? That is what we want to analyze. So to track the coefficients and the various operations on them, we represent this system. We are we don't want S1, uh, we don't want X1, X2 and coming in picture. So let us write that. Variables are X1, X2, Xn, equality and the right hand side something appears, right. Their coefficients are for X1 coefficient is A11, right. For X2 in the first equation A12. So what we are doing, we fix the positions of the coefficients. When we go in a row, we will be representing the coefficients of that equation x1, x2, xn and when we go vertically down, then we will be representing for the equation, first equation, second equation, third equation and so on. So written this way, all the uh, data about the system is captured. We have fixed the position of the variables, this is captured. So this motivates, so a, a rectangular array of n equations in n variables. So basically what we are saying is to represent a system of linear equations, a rectangular array of numbers becomes important, right. So uh, we start defining because this is going to come again and again, it motivates a definition in mathematics, namely a rectangular array of numbers, they could be real or complex. In fact, they could be more general, but we will be concerned only with the constants which are real or complex. So a rectangular array in which there are m rows, first row, second row, third row, m rows are there and each row has got an n column, right. So this is called a matrix, okay. This is called a matrix. Why matrix is important? You can ask one of course the reason is because we are not going to bother about the variables x1 and x2 that is a real number system, right. The important thing is when we do computations, you are not going to do it humanly. You are going to put it on a computer, all the computations, right. All multiplications, division, everything. And a computer or a machine cannot store variables, it can only store scalars, right. So we can ask the machine to store the data in this format, right. Even machine will not know what is the row 1 or row 2 or row 3 or row 1 or right or number. So what will do it, it will write all, if there is a rectangular array of m numbers in uh, rectangular array m cross n, m rows n, n columns, how many total numbers are there? m into n, right. So the computer will store it as m into n numbers, but will put some kind of a mark somewhere that this first n are for the first row, next n are for the second row and so on, right, for the computational purposes. So the basic idea is matrices written this way capture the computational aspect of linear equations, okay. So this is called a matrix of order m cross n. When m is equal to n, we call this as a square matrix, number of rows is equal to number of columns. So if you are in the ith row and jth column, so that position is called the ijth term of the matrix or ijth entry of the matrix. So we will start using this term, we got a matrix whose m rows, n columns, ijth entry is so and so, right. So we will start using that language. So sometimes in short you write this whole, if you, if you are not really interested in uh, uh, numbers, but you are interested in the matrix as such as a quantity, so you write as Aij, where i and j vary according to the number of, i is the number of rows, so m and j is the number of columns n, okay. Sometimes this is important and useful also, if the matrix has got m rows and one column, so this is a column. 
in the matrix it looks like a vertical thing, so it is called a column vector, right? And similarly, if it is uh, one cross n, then it is called a row vector. Okay. So, for example, this is a column vector, and this is a row vector. Later, we'll also uh, do one thing that a n cross one column vector, there are n rows, okay, n cross one. We also will identify sometimes there is a point in R n. So, a column vectors will also be identified as points in the corresponding R to the power, right. If it is a comp so, if it is a 1 cross uh, n cross 1, n rows, 1 column, then it will be identified as a point in R n. So, this kind of identification we will also do when we want to simplify things, okay. So, we have defined a new quantity which involves numbers. So, what are the possibilities? What kind of operations we can do? So, this is very common in mathematics. You define a quantity, you collect all such quantities and try to do operations on these quantities. For example, you must have studied functions, right, real valued functions. Then you can think of real valued function defined on an interval. You can add functions, you can multiply functions, you can scale or multiply a function, you can compose functions. So, in the class of all functions, you can do these various operations. You can add, you can subtract, you can scale or multiply, you can multiply functions or you can compose functions. Similarly, we have got collection of matrices, right. So, what do we want to do? First of all, given two matrices of the same order, we say they are equal. So, we are defining equality of matrices. The order is same. So, natural thing to say when they are equal means what? Each entry should be equal. So, i h i j th entry of 1 should be equal to i j th entry of other, right? The corresponding entries must be equal. So, that is equality of matrices. 